Oh, hi, Carl. Let me put you on speaker. Hey, Pat. I need an update on the latest issue. Are you on your computer? Uh, yeah. Great. Send what you have so far and... Was that a seagull? Uh, no, I think that's on your end. Are you sure? I think I'm hearing waves, too. Are you in the office? Of course. I'm in the office. I'm here with Eric. He's in my office, too. Yeah, hi, Carl. Uh, so what did you think? We are playing hooky and we're out at the uh, beach or something? No, I trust you guys. Okay, I'll send that file right over. Bye. Welcome to Frequency Matters, the RF Microwave Update Series. I'm Pat Hindle, and I'm here with my co-host Eric Heim, and we're here again at our annual beach episode on Plum Island in Newbury, Massachusetts. And so Eric and I narrowly escaped being detected by our boss working from the beach, and we're not alone in that matter. Uh, Verizon just did a survey of beachgoers, and 75% bring their phone and use it at the beach, and they're more likely to do that than to bring their uh, cooler and chairs and umbrella. They're going to have a cell phone. And they also found that 60% of those people have worked from the beach on their phone. And of those, 20% did it without their boss or coworkers knowing it. So we're definitely not alone. That shows you how attached we are to our phones. That's right. So in this episode, we're going to take a look at our July simulation software and test themed issue. And in that issue, the cover story is efficiently simulating phased arrays with active impedance and it's written by co-authors from Keysight and Strataset. Very in-depth article, so a good one to check out, Eric. What do we have for technical features? Well, yeah, Pat, uh, thanks. In support of the theme, we've got uh, a good collaboration from NI and Menlo Micro that looks at uh, using MEM switches to test antenna tuning switches. So we get some inputs on uh, test techniques and challenges, and it also does a great job of looking at the advantages and disadvantages of several different switch technologies. And uh, if you're not familiar with the Menlo Micro Ideal Switch, it does a great job of uh, giving an overview of that process and technology. And we also have an article from AMCAD Engineering that looks at simulating and modeling a GAN transistor. So the article takes us through the process of uh, extracting the model, uh, simulating the model, and it extends that process up to components and to system levels. So lots of good information there, lots of Smith charts and graphs and models and all sorts of good stuff. And so uh, turning to the news, I've seen a trend in the aerospace and defense industry. They're finally uh, you know, lowering the cost and increasing the speed to market these days, essentially using uh, modular building blocks. And Raytheon had a uh, press conference with their advanced technology division, which I think was the first one. I applaud them for uh, being more publicly facing these days than they have been in the past. And they discussed how they've won a uh, U.S. Army contract to do future systems. And they have their uh, platform called Arcade, which is a modeling and simulation platform. So it allows customers to quickly develop a system and then use their modular uh, hardware to put it together. And so they gave some examples of the modular hardware. They have uh, standard power systems. They have standard uh, fin steering systems for missiles. And the one that we can relate to is they have a standard radar unit. And these are two foot cubed. And you can put these cubes together and they use open interfaces like MOSA and they will put these together in the size that will meet your mission needs. So it's a pretty cool approach and I think it really will realize the speed to market and lowering in cost. And another example is Mercury Systems won a 13 million dollar contract for the US Navy and they're going to use their RF system in package and that's kind of a standard commercial application that they've put together and they're applying it to many programs. And finally Case also won a 173 million dollar contract from Raytheon and they'll be supplying standard data link units to a international missile program. So what did you see in the news? Maybe cover some commercial stuff. Yeah, so I saw that uh, Seaver Semiconductors and Blue Wireless have announced a development contract for 57 to 71 gigahertz antenna modules. And the uh, intended application there is train to track. And so we've heard about this intelligent railway system for a, a while now, and it's kind of interesting to see that things are actually happening. And it's also interesting that that looks to be an area that 5G uh, looks to monetize. And uh, speaking of 5G, I also saw that Omdia and 5G Americas came out with a report 
that says we are just about at 2 billion global 5G connections. And they anticipate that number going up to 7.7 .7 billion in 2028. Uh, so in their estimation, 5G is being adopted quicker than 4G at similar points in the development cycle. So the numbers look good. Uh, the challenge, of course, is how do operators make money on 5G? Yeah, it's very interesting to see how you really can monetize this these days. And uh, turning to events, we have the IEEE EMC SIPI event coming up August 5 through 9 in Phoenix, Arizona. Our editor from Signal Integrity Journal, Eric Bogatin, will be there along with our boss, Carl. We'll make sure we're working from the beach that week. And also the next event after that will be in September. The 22nd through the 27th will be European Microwave Week in Paris, France. We'll all be there. I mean, who cannot go to an event in Paris? Come on. Can't miss that. And so I really think European Microwave Week is going to be positioned to be a premier microwave event in the world. They have three conferences. So they have a radar conference, a microwave conference, and a microwave semiconductor conference. And then they couple that with three great forms. They have an automotive form, a 5G, 6G form, and a defense, space, and security form. And these are great. I mean, they're very unique because they bring the OEMs and the mid-tier suppliers and component and device people all together and share technical information. And you really don't get that at any other conference in the world. So it's really becoming the premier microwave conference globally. Yeah. Uh, what did you see for events? Well, we have our next EDI Con Online Educational Day coming up on August the 21st. And uh, that's our signal integrity, power integrity session. And speaking of Eric Bogatin, he's doing the keynote session. So uh, that'll be worthwhile. And still plenty of time to register. So please do that by checking our website uh, and, uh, and signing up for that. That'll be good. And uh, that wraps up this episode from the beach of Frequency Matters. Our sponsor is RFMW. Uh, RFMW is a technical distributor of RF and microwave components and now power management components as well. When you start your next design, consider their multiple product lines. And remember, as a member of the industry, subscription to Microwave Journal is free, so please go to our website and sign up if you're not already a subscriber. And thanks for watching uh, the Beach episode here, and please join us again for another Frequency Matters.